We ended the last video with the idea that we can use biomolecules in our foods or stored in our bodies, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, as energy sources to make ATP. Let's use glucose as an example. Examine the picture of glucose in the lower left corner of this picture. What is energetic about that glucose molecule that we can use in the production of ATP? We can take high energy electrons from carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. In terms of cellular energy, we can think of carbohydrates and lipids and proteins as simply sacks of electrons. Every time we break a carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bond, we liberate energy that we can use mainly through the harvesting of those high energy electrons. The first metabolic pathway in the process of glucose catabolism is glycolysis. That word literally means glucose splitting. Glycol refers to glucose and lysis means to split. The overall process of glycolysis involves the splitting of the six carbon glucose molecule to produce two three carbon products both called pyruvate. Glycolysis is shown in really brief view here and this is a more detailed view of glycolysis. It's a metabolic pathway involving 10 different enzymes. I don't care that you know the details of the process, so the brief review is good enough. We start with a glucose molecule, which is shown as a six carbon ring. I also added one more bit of detail, the red oxygen atom. In the first half of glycolysis, the glucose molecule is split into two three carbon compounds called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. I don't care if you know that name. Notice that these first steps require two ATPs to be broken down to two ADPs. Why is this necessary? Well, if you said that the catabolism of two ATPs provides the activation energy to get the stable glucose molecule to start reacting, that's a really good answer. Ultimately, the cell will be producing as many ATPs as possible but it has to spend some in the beginning to gain more in the end. When the glucose molecule is split, a carbon-oxygen bond is broken at the top of the glucose molecule in our picture, and a carbon-carbon bond is broken, indicated by the green arrow, at the bottom of the glucose molecule in our picture. The carbon-carbon bond is a pair of high-energy electrons. When that bond is broken, that liberates energy that ultimately after several, several chemical reactions, produces 4 ATP and 2 NADH. The 4 ATP can be used immediately for any energetic need the cell has. Since the cell used 2 ATPs at the beginning of the process, we can say that there is a net ATP production of 4 minus 2 equals 2 ATPs. The NADH molecules carry high energy electrons taken from the glucose molecule. NADH is like an electron taxi. It picks up high energy electrons and shuttles them to another part of the cell where those electrons are used. We'll see NADH and its empty version NAD plus again as we move along to other metabolic pathways. Well, let's summarize glycolysis. First, all the steps of glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. This is true for prokaryotes and it's true for eukaryotes. Now let's summarize the molecular products of glycolysis. No carbon dioxides are produced, 2 NADH, no FADH2, we'll see these later, and a net of 2 ATP. As we go through the rest of the metabolic pathways, we'll add to this table so that we can compare among them in the end.